Welcome everybody to Build Fly Go. So this is going to be a new set of videos uh, with the quarantine going on all over the world. I needed something to do with my spare time. So I came across a pre-loved uh, RV-10 kit. The RV-10 is the four seat version of my airplane basically. It's bigger, four seats, more fuel, um, a lot more space overall. And I figured I would do a video uh, of the build. So I have three cameras in the workshop uh, and I will have the video for all three of them. You can pick which uh, view you want to watch and I'm going to record the same voiceover and put them all three. So if you want to see a different view and just continue watching the voiceover, you can just switch to the other video and uh, pick the uh, roughly the same spot and you'll be where you are. So this is the empanage. Uh, unfortunately, I did not um, start recording or saving all the videos from the beginning. Uh, this is the empanage, which is the tail of the airplane. And I'm currently working on the horizontal stabilizer, which is the large part that is on the table right there. Um, in the back, you can see the rudder is uh, over there on the back. And I'm currently unpacking the vertical stabilizer the vertical stabilizer for this kit had some damage. Uh, this is an older kit, it's maybe 10 years old, so I'm very carefully inspecting all of the parts to make sure that there's no you know, damage, rust, things like that. There's been a little bit of corrosion here and there that I've either mitigated, um, very little if that, that I've mitigated, or I've just replaced the parts. So you'll see every so often there'll be a crate of parts that shows up and that's the a crate of parts from vans that I have uh, received to replace. So you can see I'm using all sorts of different tools here. Um, the general step-by-step uh, -step of the uh, vans uh, RV build is you the, the parts arrive, um, as you can see in the very back there, the parts arrive metal with that blue film on them. That's just a protective film. You remove the film, you assemble all of the parts. Uh, I'm sorry, you remove the film, you deburr mostly the parts, get the clean up the edges, uh, remove the sharp bits, and then you um, assemble them with Clicos, which are temporary fasteners. You can see me putting Clicos, uh, they're sort of the, they look like little sticks that are going in into the parts. And you see there I am assembling the vertical stabilizer you can see in the back. And the clicos are the things sticking out. Um, so, sorry, you assemble them, then you drill all of the holes to the final size, and then uh, you remove all the clicos, you deburr all of your holes, remove all the, the, the burrs, and then you either dimple or countersink, or you don't. And then you have the choice to, if you wish, you can prime the parts. You'll notice, you'll see some shiny parts and some parts that are that sort of greenish color. The green is the primer. Um, I use a two-part epoxy primer and um, it's very stiff and uh, you'll see us the, right there we're prepping parts for prime. You sort of wash them down with uh, pre-coat which is, uh, uh, I don't know, a soap-like sub -like substance. You wash them down and uh, then, yeah, then you spray, you sort of all that spray and uh, you give them a day uh, before you start, uh, you know, you can, you can then assemble. Um, and then you assemble with rivets. Uh, most of the time they are squeezed rivets. You'll see me using the rivet squeezer there. It's the red thing that's been in my, on, on, on and off my hand there. And uh, you rivet everything together and then you have a part. You usually rivet the skeleton of the part first um, and then you will slowly uh, rivet the skin onto the skeleton of the part. Um, with the vertical stabilizer, it's much easier for you to see because it's an easy, you know, sort of a simple part. You take breaks. You see me taking breaks a lot. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then you go about uh, making the part. So you, you see how it's sort of a nice, that's a really nice green finish for the um, for the primed parts. It's That primer is very, very sturdy. Um, it works it's incredible. It's an extra step. It's definitely not a required uh, required thing to do. Um, a lot of airplanes out there are not primed and they're fine. Uh, I just like, um, I definitely like priming parts and especially for parts that have been around a long time. 
um, already. I think this kit that I purchased, this empanage and wing kit that I purchased is 10 years old. So it's already been sitting out. Um, uh, personally, I like having it primed and, you know, it just gives it that extra longevity. So yeah, so um, I am now, so these are the elevators that you see. That's those the elevator spars and the ribs. Um, the transitions are days going by. You can see the date on the top left over there. The transitions that you see are the days going by and how much I work on each day. I've been basically after work every day, I head downstairs and uh, to the workshop and I you know work on the kit. There is, um, you can see there, so there are some elevator spars, front and rear spars. I'm working on the end ribs right there. You can see them clear coat. And there are the elevator skins. I'm removing the uh, plastic with the, that tubing. I think it's one of the elevator um, push rod tubes. But uh, yep, yeah, deburring, um, cleaning things up, bending the edges. Uh, you can see me with the angle grinder there um, with the deburr. There's a deburring wheel on that grinder. Um, and I'm just deburring everything. There's a lot of deburring that goes on, a lot of uh, clicking things and drilling them and just getting them ready. Um, and then you take everything apart and you dimple it and you prime it before going ahead and riveting it. So this is, um, I'm interested in hearing what your thoughts are on this format, um, and if this is interesting, and if you think I should try doing a picture in picture so that there's not three different camera views. Um, I think for this one, it makes sense to do a picture in picture. I might actually do it after this recording. So you may actually see a picture in picture here. <laughs> um, and you're hearing me talk about, should I do a picture in picture? And there might be one there, we'll see. And, uh, but this one works because I'm not actually using the whole frame of the, the image. Uh, you can see the bottom left there is pretty much uh, unused. But as the project gets bigger, the whole frame is going to be full and there'll be plenty to look at. So um, everything's drilled. I'm deburring things. I'm moving them around. Uh, I'm probably going to start dimpling parts. It's hard to, to see. Mary is washing down parts right now for me as I clean things up and I'm also washing down parts and getting them ready because we are getting ready to prime these probably in the next day or two. You can see them sitting on top of the tub of uh, pre-coat there. Uh, the pre-coat process is pretty darn easy. It's basically um, you spray it down, you scuff it, you spray it down again and you scuff it in the other direction and then you just rinse it all off, make sure all the bubbles are gone and rinse it all off, and then uh, and then once it's dry, you spray it. So um, there we are washing, that's me washing parts and putting them down, and uh, I had mixed um, primer just before that. You saw me working on uh, some paint cans, and I'm gonna be outside spraying. Yep, there we go, spraying parts, mixing more primer, getting really frustrated that I did not mix enough primer. That's a constant pain source for me is when I um, do this and then I don't mix enough primer and it's I have to wait another half hour for the primer to kick so when you mix the primer you have there's an induction time for the chemical process to, to happen and you have to wait a half hour and it's usually there's usually like a couple of different parts left over or I want to touch up a part here or there and I have to wait a half hour for it to happen and it drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm terrible at uh, figuring out how much primer I need. So this is the next day. The, the parts um, that I primed are ready and I am starting to uh, assemble them. You can see me click of things together and riveting them. You can see the riveter, uh, the squeeze riveter in my hand there. There's also a um, bucking riveter that you're going to see um, later on. You might notice it in some other spots. Um, here we go. Uh, well, that was really quick riveted all of those ribs in place. This is sort of fun to watch. Look at how fast this goes. Um, this is two weeks of work, by the way. Uh, you'll, you'll notice I started recording in the big, in the middle of April, I believe. Um, so we're coming up on the end of April. Yeah, this is April 28th now. So we're coming up on the end of April and uh, we'll see how far we get. Another option I was thinking about um, later on is I can break these videos down into different parts. So I may have a video on, this is all of um, 
building the elevator, or building the rudder, or, well, not building the rudder, building the elevators, or building trim tabs, or things like that. I don't know that there's really going to be enough detail in each of these for you to see um, any of that, uh, because, the you know, like, I'm not recording in, you know, up close as I, as I do things. But we'll, we'll see. I will play around with it. I am very open to ideas and what would be interesting for you guys to see here. Um, as usual, please do comment and tell me what works, what doesn't work, what you like, what you don't like, and we'll take it from there. So that should be it. There's maybe another minute of video left. Um, enjoy. Uh, please subscribe if you'd like to see more. And uh, we'll, we'll have some more flying videos as well. All right, have a great day.